What do you think about the use of checkpoints? This is a question by Javi, and it doesn't come with any other detail. What do you think about the use of checkpoints? I'm going to have to use a bit of extrapolation and kind of interpret what I think this question means and what it what it's referring to and what the really um, the, the seed of this question is. So uh, recently, uh, a couple of weeks ago. The maintainers and developers of the uh, Bitcoin Cash ABC branch, uh, BCH ABC, um, added a feature that was a bit controversial, which was a rolling ten-block checkpoint that prevents reorganizations um, that prevents reorganizations for ten blocks. So that means that um, you can't present a chain um, that reorganizes above ten blocks, and this rolling checkpoint is a feature that was intended to protect uh, Bitcoin Cash ABC against a specific type of attack, which is uh, an attack that uses what's called secret mining. And what secret mining is is where a rival um, hashing power is mining blocks. Um, without releasing them, without broadcasting them on the chain. And then once it has enough distance, so it mines a longer chain, and then once it's achieved a, a longer chain by a significant factor, it then releases that chain, and that chain uh, causes a reorganization um, on the victim chain. I'm using the terms attack and victim here. Uh, in computer security terms rather than political terms, so please don't read too much into it. But um, with secret mining, you'd have one chain mining, one group of mining power mining secretly, mining a whole blocks, a whole set of blocks ahead, say ten blocks ahead, and then broadcasting all ten blocks and the longer chain in one go, forcing a reorganization of the entire chain and invalidating. Um, say the nine blocks that the rival um, hashing power has mined already on the other uh, chain. And this is intended to cause disruption primarily or to cause kind of like a hostile takeover of a chain. I'm not quite sure how you want to characterize that, but that's certainly possible within the within the blockchain uh, logic. Now compare this to how uh, Bitcoin works. Uh, so to date, the Bitcoin chain does not have a rolling checkpoint, meaning that the algorithm allows for a reorganization of any length. The largest we've seen was back in, uh, I believe it was April of 2013 or 2014. I'm not sure when we had a glitch in the version upgrade between 0.7 and 0.8, which caused uh, an unplanned, unexpected and um, accidental, not deliberate, divergence of the, of the blockchain into two uh, competing chains um, that diverged for 26 blocks at the highest level. And then one chain was selected, which caused the other one to be orphaned, and the whole chain reorganized uh, 26 blocks deep. Uh, that's the deepest reorganization that's happened. And on a almost daily basis, you have one block reorganizations, and every uh, month or so you have two or three block reorganizations, and these happen due to simply uh, the statistical variance in the number of blocks that come out within a 10 minute period, and how blocks are found in different parts of the network with differing latency, and they're seen by different parts of the network. These cause normal expected network forks, where the Nakamoto consensus temporarily forks, where you have two possible um, chains that are being seen by different parts of the network, and then they reconverge when one of them achieves more hash rate than the other. Uh, and eventually all of those reconverge. And the longest we've seen is 26, um, which is a very unusual event, but in any case, there has never been a rolling checkpoint. Now, there's another type of checkpoint, um, which is a checkpoint which is hard coded inside the software, which um, puts a, a bottom limit and says um, everything below this uh, block is considered 
established history and cannot change, what prohibits reorganizations below that. Um, and that kind of chain uh, checkpoint is different. So that's hard coding a specific hash in the software and saying this this particular block cannot be reorged away. Um, now, um, and and that was used in fact in the in the twenty six block checkpoint, I believe. So um, in the twenty six block uh, reorganization, I should say. So what do I think about this? Well. This is a change in the relative power of two different constituencies within the broader consensus mechanism. If you think about it, and I've talked about this before, consensus is a multi-constituency power, meaning that consensus isn't just miners, it's not just developers, it's not just merchants, it's not just exchanges, it's not just wallets. It's five different groups of consensus with overlapping membership. Miners, developers, exchanges, wallets, merchants, or if you like, uh, miners, developers, and economically important node owners, all contribute to emergent consensus by deciding which rules to follow, how to set the rules, what software to use. Um, and when you put a change in the algorithm of what can be reorganized and what can not be reorganized into the software, and you circulate that to software, such as the rolling checkpoint, what it does is it shifts a tiny bit of power away from miners and towards developers. So now developers are changing the way the protocol behaves to reorganizations. They're preventing certain classes of reorganizations. Um, if you put hard-coded checkpoints, that's a more serious and more direct. A uh, change of power because now m developers are deciding which chain is valid rather than allowing the proof of work consensus algorithm to make that decision independently. Therefore, the miners uh, to make that decision uh, together. So, all of these these types of changes and checkpoints do represent a slight shift in power in the consensus mechanism away from one group and towards another group. And then it's really up to you to decide what you think about how uh, serious this change of power is. Uh, whether it's a change of power that is justified, for example, you might think that in the case of a deliberate secret mining attack, or when someone has actually threatened to do exactly that, and has telegraphed that they will do that and spend millions of dollars doing that, purely to damage uh, a chain in a competition between two forks, uh, then is that a reasonable um, is that a reasonable response uh, to my, um, a mining group trying to take more power? Um, is there a reasonable response for the developers to take more power by changing the rules of reorganization, or take even more power by setting a hard checkpoint or repeated hard checkpoints in the software to prevent any reorganization? Again, that's a subjective thing, and that subjective thing, which is the decision as to whether you think this is a valid change or not, is how you express your role in consensus as a valid economic user of the softwares, because nodes that have economic power, nodes that use um, the, the chain in order to do transactions, that generate transaction volume, that are generating real, true economic activity, merchants, exchanges, wallets, uh, end users, big, big companies, big whales, um, people who are doing a lot of transactions, whatever that may be, they choose what software to run. And in choosing what software to run, that's their contribution to the emergent consensus. And so, if you see developers making this change, you can choose to run the software that you had before. You can choose to upgrade to the new software. And in choosing, you are expressing your own consensus vote.